you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you can and you do that by coming up with the answers no one else could think of. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, my name's Henry, this is my friend Dylan and we're from Liverpool. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Rose, I'm from Sheffield and this is my mate Ruby from London. Couple number three. Hi, I'm David and this is my son Ryan and we're from Edinburgh. And finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Jill. This is my friend John, and we're from the beautiful county of Northumberland. Here, here. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. It's wonderful to have you with us. Uh, we'll chat a bit further throughout the show as it goes along, of course. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He lives in a house made of chemical elements, as we all do, I suppose. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Hiya. Hi. If I lived in a house made of chemical elements, I would have a periodic table in my oh. front room. That's what I would <laughs> a do. nest of them. Yeah. Um, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. Uh, lovely to be here. Yeah. Um, lovely final round last time. Mel and Chris took home the jackpot with the answer Peter Andre. Yes. Peter Andre won the money. Uh, Ruby and Rose back from that show got through to their head to head, played very, very well. Yeah, should be fun, right? It should be. Yeah. It should be. On paper, it should be. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, yes, yeah, so as you gather, Mel and Chris won the jackpot, which means, of course, we start off uh, with a lovely jackpot of £1,000. There it is. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> All you have to remember is that the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated, so please score as low as you dare. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is... Food. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Food and drink containing the letter Z. Richard. Seven clues on each pass to foods which contain the letter Z. I will also give you the first letter of that food and how many letters are in its name. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. So there are 14 pieces of food or drink that contain the letter Z. Yeah, and I tell wow. you what, Alphabetti Spaghetti is not one of them. No. Although it does contain the letter Z. Yeah, periodically. Yeah, it has yeah. all of them. Yeah. Actually, I wonder if it does. I've never I done that. I wonder. I wonder how they allot. They must allocate letters. They must be. There must surely. be someone in charge of that. Thank you very much indeed. OK, so we are looking for the answers to all these food and drink questions uh, contain the letter Z. That's all I can tell you. Let's have a look at our first board of clues. We've got seven of them. And they are alternative name for the summer squash known as courgette in the UK. Z, eight. Pale, very dry Spanish fino sherry. M, ten. Crisp biscuit snack baked in the form of a knot and flavoured with salt. P, seven. Italian dessert made of whipped and heated egg yolks, sugar and wine. Z, ten. Round hard-shelled nut used to make Gianduja chocolate paste. H, eight. Dish consisting of a round base of dough baked with toppings. A margarita is a classic variety. P, five. Spanish soup served cold, made with tomatoes and peppers. G, eight. I'm going to read those again. That took nearly a month to read, didn't it? <laughs> Alternative name for the summer squash known as courgette in the UK. Pale, very dry Spanish fino sherry. Crisp biscuit snack baked in the form of a knot and flavoured with salt. Italian dessert made of whipped and heated egg yolks, sugar and wine. Round hard-shelled nut used to make Gianduja chocolate paste. Dish consisting of a round base of dough baked with toppings. A margarita is a classic variety. And Spanish soup served cold, made with tomatoes and peppers. Oh, you're all still there. <laughs> Henry, welcome to Point. It's good to have you here. Um, tell us about yourself, Henry. What do you do? So, I am a student at Liverpool. You are a student in what year? Uh, second year. Second year. Second year. What are you studying? I'm doing medicine. I see. OK. And how long is the course there? Three or four years? Uh, it's four for us. Four. Yeah. Righto. And uh, what are your interests, Henry? So, in my spare time, I play the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Not enough people do that. Um, um, have you been playing it for a long time? Though? Have you them for a long time? Yeah, I've been playing for about eight years. I sort of gave up for a bit, but I've just joined a band in Liverpool, so get going again. Do, do you march or do you play sitting down? We do both. We march. Um, I sort of you can't really play sitting down. <laughs> I do remember. I do remember George Martin apparently got uh, got some bagpipers in, and um, when he got them in the studio, they kept marching, so they were going off mic. 
So he kept saying, no, could you stand still? And they say, no, we can't, we don't, we don't stand still. <laughs> That's so, true, yeah. So basically, yeah, bagpipes basically on the march all the time. Um, now, uh, Henry, what would you like to go for on our board? Um, so I think I'm going to go for the first one, uh, zucchini. Zucchini, says Henry. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said zucchini. It's right. 60. 60 for zucchini. Courgette and zucchini both mean the same thing. Both mean little gourd. One is from the, the French, one is from the Italian. Little Sweet, gourd. It? It's a good name, zucchini. Yeah, it is a good name. Yeah, it's better than, uh, than courgette. Mm. Oh, courgette's terrible. Mm. Terrible. Yeah, name. it's a terrible name. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ruby, welcome back to Pointless. Hello. Oh, through to the head to head last time. Yeah. Gotta be hoping to make it through to the head to head, maybe beyond this time. Hopefully, yeah, that's oh. the plan. Uh, remind us what you do, Ruby. Um, I work in a complaints department for a bank. <laughs> that's, I mean, c can you see on a screen how, how many people are queuing? While you're dealing with one oh, complaint, uh, can you see a backlog of complainants? Like, no, so we've got a sort of never-ending spreadsheet. So <sighs> we've got the yeah the number of outstanding complaints. Um, oh. It's one of those. As soon as one closes, another four have been added. We did you... talk to we did talk to Ruby about this last time. We said, <laughs> "How do you deal with the stress?" And she says, "I try not to answer the phone." <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? Do they do something halfway through the day to cheer you all up? Do they sort of, no. I don't know, send in a, a juggler or something just to calm you all down? No. They no. should. That's what they should do. <laughs> um, Ruby, what would you like to go for on our board? Um, there's a few that I think are quite obvious. Mm. Um, I'm going to go to the bottom one and say gazpacho. Gazpacho? Yeah. Gazpacho. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said that gazpacho. It's right. 39 for gazpacho. Very good indeed. Yeah, not for me, a gazpacho. Oh, really? No. Oh, I, I do don't like, like it. Num, 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 num. Uh, mm. Hot, maybe, but not even mm. hot. I don't oh, think I like it. And no, I don't like a gazpacho. Really? What is it? Is it the, is it the consistency? I think, it's, I think it's everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Ryan. Welcome to Pointless. Great to have Thanks. you here. What do you do, Ryan? Um, so I'm an account trainer for a communications company and I specialise in customer support for the gaming industry. Oh, I see. No complaints in the gaming industry, I uh, imagine. Well... <laughs> you don't have, you'd have to deal with complaints? Um, not personally myself, no. but okay. uh, people I train do. So. OK. And do you interested in gaming when not at work? Yeah, yeah, I do. You still find pleasure in it, even though it is what you do from dawn till dusk? That's it. I still do. <laughs> I find some time to fit in, so, yeah. Very good indeed. What else do you like getting up to, Ryan? Um, I'm quite a uh, big fan of football. Um, so me and my dad, uh, big fans of Hart and Midlothian are our team from Edinburgh. Right. Very good. Uh, Ryan, how are you on our foodstuffs here, containing the letter Z? A um, couple in mind. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the crisp biscuit snack um, and pretzel. Pretzel, says Ryan. Let's see how many of our 100 people said pretzel. It's right. 60 is our high score, 39 is our low. You passed the high score, 47. <laughs> Almost right in the middle there, in fact, 47 for pretzel. Uh, yeah, originally invented by monks to reward students. They were supposed to uh, look like arms praying, essentially. I did not know mm. that. Interesting, mm. isn't that? Mm. Interesting. I like a pretzel. I do like a pretzel. Mm. Mm. I'm starving. <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed. OK, now, Jill, welcome. Lovely thank to you. have you here from Northumberland. Whereabouts in Northumberland do you do? Kirk Welpington. No! Just near Rothbury. Yes, exactly. Lovely. Sorry, We're, I'm from Northumberland, you see. <laughs> um, that's wonderful. Jill, what do you like getting up to in, in Kirk um, Wellpington? I'm a rambler. I'm a oh, member of the you... local ramblers. Oh, you're spoiled for choice Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Um, you, where do you like to ramble? Where's your favourite walk? Uh, oh, I quite like the Upper Tyne Valley up near the Cheviot and Alwinton. Lovely. And... Lovely. Up there, Barrowburn, very nice. Very and nice. You can walk all day and not see another person, and that's wonderful. what's best about it. Wonderful, wonderful, Jill. Um, you're the last person to have this board of, uh, of foodstuffs containing the letter Z. What would you like to go for? Oh, dear. I think I'm going to try the very dry Spanish fino sherry, which mm. is manzanillo. Manzanillo. OK, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Bad luck, Jill. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Oh, right. And it scores you 100 points. I'm sorry. 
Uh, yeah, it's only an incorrect answer by one letter as well, I'm afraid. It's one of those ones, though, with the vowels in Spanish. You have to be very careful. It's uh, manzanilla. Yeah. It's the best answer on the board, actually. It would have scored you four points. So very well done if you said that at home, and very tough luck on that final podium. The Italian dessert... It's pronounced as Zabaglioni, but Zabiglioni is how yeah, it's written. Yeah, Zabaglioni or Zabaglioni. Mm. Yeah, Zabaglioni. Uh, would have scored 17 points. The nut... No idea. You know the nut. It's a nut. It's a famous nut. It's got a Z in it. Oh, it's hazelnut. Hazelnut. Oh, God, there right. You go. I've never heard of Gyandusha. I was going to say, was listen, if it's uh, Gyandusha. 30 to 33 points for that. And uh, that's when, of course, this peaks a very low score, surprisingly low score. You'd think it would score in the 90s, 71. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a quick look at those scores. Uh, 39, what about that, Ruby? The best score of the past. Well done, you. Ruby and Rose looking very strong at this point. 47 is where we find Ryan and David. 60 is where we find Henry and Dylan, then Jill and John. On 100, I'm afraid, on that far podium. John, we're going to need a low score from you in the next pass. And who knows? Maybe it'll be enough to keep you in the game. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more clues up on the board, and here they are. These are all food and drink items containing the letter Z. Plum brandy made in Central and Eastern Europe, S, 9. Spicy Spanish pork sausage flavoured with paprika, C, 7. Small pieces of pasta shaped like large grains of rice, O, 4. Sweet paste of ground almonds, sugar and egg used in making cakes and pastries, M, 8. The outer coloured part of the peel of citrus fruit, Z, Four, curry dish, usually made with meat, fish or vegetables, cooked with chilies, tomatoes and onions, J, eight. And a thin slice of veal or other meat coated in breadcrumbs and fried, S, nine. I'll read those again. Plum brandy made in Central and Eastern Europe. Spicy Spanish pork sausage flavoured with paprika. Small pieces of pasta shaped like large grains of rice. Sweet paste of ground almonds, sugar and egg used in making cakes and pastries. The outer coloured part of the peel of citrus fruit Curry dish, usually made with meat, fish or vegetables, cooked with chilies, tomatoes and onions, and a thin slice of veal or other meat coated in breadcrumbs and fried. There we are. John, a very warm welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Great to have you here with us. Um, what do you do, John? I'm retired. I've been retired about three years. What did you do prior to retirement? Well, I had a, a fairly checkered career one way or another. I, had, I was anything from a tax inspector, postman... I spent 20 years in the IT industry. I had a dabble at being a, a stage photographer, a rock photographer, so I tried a few things. Talk to me about stage photography and rock photography. That sounds fun. Well, Where were you doing was, that? It was about late, late 70s, early 80s, and I went to see Squeeze one night and noticed they didn't have a stills photographer, so I rang them up the next day and kind of Can lagged I... my way in, you know? Fantastic. Uh, now then, you're the high scorers on 100, so we do need a low score from you. There you are, a pristine board. Whereabouts do you want to dive in? Oh, I think I want to dive in on the third one because Italian's sort of my favourite cuisine. And I will say that is Orzo, O-R-Z-O. Orzo. Uh, says John. That sounds like a really good answer. Quite possibly the best on that board. You never know. Let's see. No red line for you as you're the high scorers, but let's see how far down the column we get with Orzo. It's right. Nine. Very, very good indeed. Best score of the round so far. I doubt anyone's going to better that. That takes your total up to 109. Very well done. Well played, John. Yes, the Italian word for barley also. Hmm. Just in mm -hmm. case you ever need that. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, David, welcome to Point. It's great Hello. to have you here from Edinburgh. Uh, what do you do, David? Uh, I work for a large uh, financial services company. Um, I work in the finance department as a change manager. A cha what, looking after the two P's, no, no. five P's? <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't involve touching the money. No, it's, oh, right. it's more uh, dealing with um, regul regulatory change or uh, any changes we're making to our products to so right. make sure our financial so system... I mean, change must come all the time. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the interesting things about uh, no no uh, one project or no one job, uh, day is the same, you know, it's quite varied, you know, so... Does that mean when everyone sees you coming, I think, oh, Dave's coming, or well, everything we know is about uh, to well, alter? Well, there's a little bit like that, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, uh, uh, about things changing, you know, but yeah. that's part of the fun of it. Yeah, I yeah. bet. Uh, now, David, you're on 47. Great low score from Ryan in the first pass, which yeah. means 61 or less gets you through to round two. Yeah. How are you liking our board here? Well, there's a couple on there, but I, th I think I'll go with the sweet paste of ground almonds and say marzipan. 
OK, Marzipan says, David, here is your red line. If you can get below this red line with Marzipan, you're through to round two. How many people said it? It's right. Ooh, 64! <laughs> John and Jill, back in the game. 111 is your total. It's exciting, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, where do you stand on the marzipan debate? Are you in favour? <sighs> I used to hate it. Now, like a lot of things I used to hate when I was little, I really quite like it. Yeah, I like yeah, marzipan. I do like it. Yeah, have you always liked it? Or yeah, I've always yeah. been in favour. Yeah. Always been in favour. Interesting. There we are. Thank you. Um, now, uh, Rose. Hello. Welcome back. Remind us what you do, Rose. I work in customer support for a pure fibre optic company. That's right. A lot of glass Lots involved. Lots of it, yeah. In there. Uh, what else do you like getting up to? Um, what besides watching Pointless? <laughs> like... is that, that's, that is the best <laughs> response to that. No, you can stop right there. You're not going to top that. Um, wonderful. Rose. Yes. Brilliant low score from Ruby in the first pass. You're on 39, which means uh, 71 or less. OK. This should be easy. Well, I did some quick maths and decided that I only needed to know three to actually get it right. So I'm going to go for Jal Frazee. Jal Frazee. Incidentally, my favourite curry. Same. Uh, yeah, Jal Frazee. Very good. OK, now here is your red line. If you can get below this with Jal Frazee, you are through to the next round. How many of our 100 people said it? It's right. And you are through. Look at that. 38 for Jal Frazee. Just one uh, less than Ruby scored, uh, taking your total up to 77. Well played. That comes from the Bengali word uh, Jahal, meaning hot. Mm. They're not kidding, are they? They're not. Yeah. <laughs> they are not. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Dylan, welcome to Pointless. Great to have you Thank here. You. What do you do, Dylan? Uh, I'm a student as well with Henry. Are you a medical student? I am. In the same year? In the same year. Same sort of area of medicine, do you think? Um, maybe. We're not entirely sure what we're going to do. Um, still got a long way ahead of us. OK, so I like the we. Have you decided that you will probably make your mind up together? Oh, no, no. No. Oh, good. I see. <laughs> this is the sort of royal we, I yes. see. We, we are still deciding. And what, what seems to be your speciality at the moment? Um, I really enjoy being in surgery. It's, um, it's quite fascinating. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing, actually. Um, um, but uh, who knows what's going to be in store who for Who knows? Me. Well, good luck with it all. Uh, but also, good luck with your answer here. You're on 60. You have to score 50 or less to stay with us. Do you fancy talking us through the board, Dylan? Um, the first one, I have no idea. Um, second one, chorizo, I believe. I have no idea about that last one. I, I did think it was going to be escalope, but it hasn't. It, it's it's hard thought, to find the Z yeah, in there, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go with the outer coloured part of the peel of citrus fruit, zest. You're going to go for zest. You have to score 50 or less here. Let's see what happens. There is your red line. Ooh. That looks like a long way down, doesn't it? Let's see. Now, can you get below that with zest? Let's find out. Certainly right. We 75 for Zest, Dylan. <laughs> David and Ryan back in the game. That scores you 135. Yeah, biggest score up there by a mile, I'm afraid. Uh, Teresa would have seen you through to the next round very easily. Uh, Teresa would have scored you 49 points. Ah. Uh, the one at the bottom, the thin slice of veal, is a schnitzel. That's a schnitzel. Yeah, I love a schnitzel. Oh, I like a schnitzel. Mm, who doesn't More like than a schnitzel? An uh, Schnitzel would have scored you 28 points. The best answer on the board, you get much more of this uh, in the UK these days, uh, is uh, Slivovitz. Ah. Slivovitz. And that would have scored you nine points. That's the, the joint best answer up there. Slivovitz, made from blue plums. Sounds quite something. Mm. Mm. Well, we can mm. have a Slivovitz and Schnitzel evening. <gasps> wow. I can't, I can't see that ending well in, <laughs> in any way. But thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you, Richard. Well, we're at the end of our first round. 135 is the high score. So, Dylan and Henry, I'm sorry. We have to say goodbye to you. We will see you again next time when we won't have any foodstuffs with Zed in. Uh, and I'm <laughs> sure we'll go much, much further. But meantime, thank you so much for playing. Dylan and Henry. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. And look at that. Down we go to three pairs. At the end of this round, we'll have to say goodbye to another pair. John also best score of the round there. Very well done. Only nine points there. Ruby and Rose always safe there with our lowest combined score, though. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category today is motor racing. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? 
And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British Formula One drivers as they could. British Formula One drivers, Richard. Looking for the name of any British uh, Formula One driver who's won points in any Formula One season from 1950 all the way through to 2017, please. Thank you very much indeed, British Formula One drivers. Ruby, yes. we come to you first. OK, um, can I say David Coulthard? You've just said it. Well, David may Coulthard. I? Yes, of course yeah. you can. David, David Coulthard. Coulthard. Yeah. yeah, David Coulthard. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's good. Very good, indeed. 19. Very well done, indeed. Ruby, great start for the round. 19 for David Coulthard. Yeah, scored 535 points overall, David Coulthard. He came on the show, didn't he? It was very nice. He did. Yeah. There's a story mm. which I think is apocryphal when mm. um, David Coulthard met the Spice Girls at a McLaren party and introduced himself as one of the drivers. They asked what time he was picking them up. <laughs> I, I suspect it's not true, but it's a nice story. <laughs> That's like the story. Thank you very much indeed. Ryan, so it's British Formula One drivers. Um, OK. Not one I'm fully confident on. Um, I have to go with Lewis Hamilton. You are going to go with Lewis Hamilton. OK, well, let's see how many of our 100 people said Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, 76. 76 for Lewis Hamilton, sorry. Yep, one is uh, fourth world title in 2017. There's lots of names on this list, by the way. This is, mm. this, this is not a short list of people. Mm -mm. It's a long mm -mm. list. Mm -mm. Um, Jill, what's it going to be? James Hunt. James Hunt, says Jill. Let's see how many of our 100 people said James Hunt. Not bad at all. 32 for James Hunt. Yeah, Formula One champion in 1976. Lots and lots of points. Thank you very much indeed. Lots and lots. Lots and lots. There we are. Exact. We're halfway through the round. Let's see how many points all our contestants have scored. 19 was the best score of the past. Ruby, okay. well done once again. Ruby and Rose looking pretty strong. 32 is where we find Jill and John. 76, Ryan and David. So, David, let's hope you've got a nice low score that will atone for that. Good luck. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? So, John, remember we are looking for any British racing driver who has won points in a Formula One season. Uh, John, you're on 32. Your target is 43 or less at this stage. Right. I think I will go with Johnny Herbert. Johnny Herbert, says John. Johnny Herbert. Here is your red line. Get below that and you're through to the head-to-head. -head. How many of our 100 people said Johnny Herbert? It's right. You smash through the red line. Let's see how far down Johnny Herbert goes. Down to four. Very well done indeed, John. That takes your total up to 36. Pressure now mounting on David. Well played, John. 98 uh, points he scored. He was driving pretty much all the way through the 90s, Johnny Herbert. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now David. Yeah. It's going to have to be a low score here. Do you yeah. follow Formula One? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um, but obviously, the obvious ones will probably won't be enough for us, so... I'm going to take a risk and go with Jim Clark. Jim Clark, says David. No red line for you as you're the high scorers. Let's see how far down the column we get with Jim Clark. Let's hope it's right. It is right. Now, four is our lowest score in this round so far. 12 is what you get for Jim Clark. Taking your total up to 88. Yeah, two-time world champion Jim Clark. Safe and sound. Thanks very much indeed. Now then, Rose. You're on 19. You have to score 68 or less with your answer. Pass. <laughs> I don't. Um, OK. I was going to say... Um, I feel like I should just probably get it right and not look stupid on the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, should I say it? Should I...? Getting a nod from Ruby there. Should I...? OK, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say Ralph Schumacher. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> there is someone you have hurt 
quite deeply in the audience. OK, you're going to say Ralph Schumacher. Well, I've said it now, haven't I? So let's, you, just, get I'm afraid it, you let's have. just get on with it. There we are. Uh, there's your red line. Let's see what happens when we say Ralph Schumacher. <laughs> no, Rose, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's an incorrect answer. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 119. Yeah, very much German. There's a, there's a clue in his name, in it. I know. In a lot of ways. But, hey, listen, he is a Formula One racing driver. At so least that's I good. got that right. That was the worst yeah. part for me. <laughs> well, you know what? If that's all you were looking for, then it's a brilliant <laughs> answer. Uh, scored lots of points as well, Ralph Schumacher. I know lots of people at home who uh, love Formula One will have uh, come up with lots of obscure things. So I'll go through all the single uh, figure answers. So Jim Clark, we had 12. So everything underneath that. You've got John Surtees would have scored you eight. Martin Brundle would have scored you six. Commentates now, of course. Uh, four points for Johnny Herbert. We already heard three for Mike Hawthorne. Two for John Watson, Eddie Irvin and Jolian Palmer. Uh, uh, more recent driver, Jolian Palmer. Johnny Dumfries would have scored you one, as would Peter Gethin, Derek Warwick, Mark Blundell, Derek Bell and Mike Halewood. All of those would have scored you one point. Let's take a look at the pointless answers now. Some good obscure names on this list. Uh, Brian Redman, who is in the, uh, the late uh, 60s, early 70s. Chris uh, turned down a drive with Ferrari as well. Chris Irwin, Jackie Oliver, pointless answers. Well done if you said some of those. Jonathan Palmer, who was Julian Palmer's father, was a pointless answer. Julian Bailey, one of the many people to have been the stig, Julian Bailey. Uh, Paul DeResta is a pointless answer. Tom Price and Tony Brooks, they're also pointless answers. We'll take a look at the top three. Jackie Stewart would have scored you 42. Jensen Button would have scored 51. And there's Lewis Hamilton up the top on 76. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we are at the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, and I can't bear it. Rose and Ruby, you've been yeah. doing so well. I couldn't oh. name any of them, to no. be fair. If it's well. any consolation, guys. <laughs> trying to will you, Nigel Mansell, but... Doesn't work. <laughs> Well, listen, you played so well up to this point. Um, I'm sorry we have to say goodbye to you now, but thank you so much for coming to play. Thank Rose you. and Ruby. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for our head-to-head. -head. <laughs> well, congratulations, Jill and John, David and Ryan. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. Well, we've made it to the head-to-head. -head. This time you're allowed to confer before you give your answers. First pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Look at that. Very pleasingly, you're standing in order of height as well, which is... Uh, <laughs> which, <laughs> that just thrills me. Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. Here is your first question, and it concerns... fictional dogs. Fictional dogs, Richard. Yep, we're going to show you five pictures now of fictional dogs from film or television and so on. Can you tell us the names of the dogs, please? Thank you very much indeed. So who are these fictional dogs? And we have got... A... B... C... D and E. There we are, yes, five cartoon and fictional dogs. Jill and John, you're our low scorers up to this point, so you get to go first. We're going to go for A and say that is Muttley. Muttley. OK, Jill and John are going to go for A and say Muttley. David and Ryan, that leaves the rest of the board for you. You can do your talking out loud. Do you want to talk us through the board? Um, I think we're comfortable with all of them apart from D. Um, so B's Santa's little helper from The Simpsons. C's Snoopy. D looks like the dog from The Jetsons, I think, but don't know the name of it. And E's Brian Griffin from Family Guy. Um, so we'll go with E. We'll go with E. Brian Griffin. Brian Griffin. So we have Muttley and we have Brian Griffin. Jill and John went for Muttley for A. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Muttley. It's right. 67 for Muttley. David and Ryan have gone for Brian Griffin. Let's see if that's right for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brian Griffin. It is Brian Griffin, and it wins you the point. Very well done. 
25 for Brian Griffin. And that means, David Ryan, after one question, you're up 1 0. Took us through the board very nicely as well. Let's see what the scores would have been. That is Santa's little helper from The Simpsons. Uh, he would have scored you 41 points. Of course, it's Snoopy. Very, very big scorer, Snoopy. He would have scored you 81. And you're right, actually, that is the dog from The Jetsons. Uh, it's called Astro. Astro. It's the best answer on the board, six points if you said that. Very well done if you did that at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. David and Ryan get to answer it first, but Jill and John, you have to win this one to stay in the game, so uh, best of luck with that. Our second question today is all about Ewan McGregor, Richard. Five clues now to facts about the actor Ewan McGregor. Thank you very much. Let's reveal our five clues, and here they are. The decade in which he was born, the name of the real-life broker he played in Rogue Trader, who caused the collapse of Barings Bank in 1995, starred in the 1996 film adaptation of the Irvin Welsh novel of the same name, starred with Nicole Kidman as the lead in this 2001 Baz Luhrmann film, and the 2004 TV documentary series that followed his motorcycle trip around the world with Charlie Borman. I'll read those again. The decade in which he was born, the name of the real-life broker he played in Rogue Trader, who caused the collapse of Barings Bank in 1995, starred in the 1996 film adaptation of the Irvin Welsh novel of the same name, starred with Nicole Kidman as the lead in this 2001 Baz Luhrmann film and the 2004 TV documentary series that followed his motorcycle trip around the world with Charlie Borman. There we go. David and Ryan will go first. Um, being Scottish, we should know more about him, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I, don't. I, I just have to go with the 1996 film, Train Spotting. Train spotting, yeah. say David and Ryan. Uh, Jill and John, that board's all yours. Do you want to talk us through it? Uh, the decade, I'd be guessing, 60s. Might be doing him a disservice there. Uh, the film, Baz Luhrmann film in 2001, we think was Moulin Rouge. But we think the name of the real life broker he played in Rogue Trader was Nick Leeson. Is that the one you're going to go for? We're going for that. Nick Leeson. OK, Nick Leeson. So we have train spotting and we have Nick Leeson. Uh, David and Ryan have gone for train spotting. Let's see how many of our 100 people said train spotting. It's absolutely right. And down it goes. Good score. Down to 27. Very well done. 27 is what you have to beat, Jill and John, to stay in the game with Nick Leeson. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Nick Leeson. It's right, and it beats train spotting. There we are, 20 for Nick Leeson. Very well done, Jill and John. Just what you needed there. Back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. You got the point, John, but you have annoyed Ewan McGregor. He's born in the 1970s. <laughs> 1971. Sorry, born, born, in, uh, born in Perth, raised in Creef. Um, would have scored you 41 points. Um, Starred with Nicole Kidman, you're absolutely right, in Moulin Rouge. Actually, scores more than train spotting Moulin Rouge. Would have scored you 31. And the TV documentary. The Long Way Round. The Long Way okay. Round, correct. And that would have scored eight points. It's the best answer on the board. Well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now here comes your third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this goes through to the final. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question. It all rests on 1980s fashion. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five fashion trends from the 1980s now, but with alternate letters removed. Can you fill in the gaps? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five fashion trends from the 80s. Here they come. S-O-L-E-P-D, P-R-C-U-E-A-T, E-P-D-I-L-S, L-G-A-M-R and S-E-L-U-T. I'll read those again. S-O-L-E-P-D, P-R-C-U-E-A-T, E-P-D-I-L-S, L-G-A-M-R and S-E-L-U-T. There we are. So, Jill and John will go first. Uh, you think we'll go for the middle one, which we think is espadrilles? <sighs> Espadrilles, say Jill and John. Espadrilles. Now then, David and Ryan. Um, Got to talk us through the remaining ones. Yeah, we think top one's shoulder pads. Um, we think the second one's parachute pants, leg warmers, and then shell suit. 
Um, I think we'll go for the second one, the parachute pants. Parachute pants, say David and Ryan. So we have espadrilles and parachute pants. Uh, espadrilles, say Jill and John. How many of our 100 got that? It's right. 42. <laughs> David and Ryan, meanwhile, have gone for parachute pants. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. And it wins the point for you. Very well done. And down it goes to one. Fantastic, David and Ryan. And it means after three questions, David and Ryan are through to the final 2 1. If you didn't know what parachute pants were, they're the terrible sounding, aren't they? Yeah, I'd, I'd never heard of parachute pants. I just worked it out. Yeah, did you? Yeah. yeah they're to. pants you wear if you want to jump off a plane. <laughs> Um, uh, the top one, you, you've got all of these right. Uh, funnily enough, Espadils is the, the highest answer up there, which is surprising. Uh, parachute pants, the lowest answer up there, unsurprisingly. Uh, shoulder pads would have scored you 22 points. Leg warmers would have scored you 41. And shell suit there would have scored you 20. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Jill and John. It's not terrible news, really, because it means we get to see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. But you've played so well today. Very well done. And thanks, Jill and John. <laughs> right, for David and Ryan, it's now time for our pointless final. Well, congratulations, David and Ryan. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. Well, you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,000. What would you like to see come up that'll help you take that £1,000 Sport home? would be a good thing, yeah. Star Wars for me. <laughs> Sport and Star Wars. Mm. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> OK, well, as you know, you get to choose your category from the four that we put up on the board. You just have to hope these don't scare you too much. Sometimes they can look a bit scary, but today's selection looks like this. Teams at Wembley Stadium. Oasis. Versailles, Robert Altman films. What do you think? Not good on Oasis. Mm. I think the only teams, teams at Wembley, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, we'll go for the top one. Teams at Wembley Stadium. Teams at Wembley Stadium, Richard. OK, we're looking for any of the following, please, gents. Very best of luck. We're looking for any team uh, who has played at the new Wembley. That's from 2007 to 2017. Uh, in an FA Cup final or FA Cup semi-final or in an EFL final, which is uh, what used to be called the League Cup and is various different names. So FA Cup final, semi-final or League Cup final. Uh, looking for any NFL team who's played at Wembley in that era, please, 2007 to 2017. Or we're looking for any international team who's played against England at the new Wembley in 2007 to 2017. So FA and League Cup teams, NFL teams or international teams who played at the new Wembley. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, um... If you... Birmingham got there. Birmingham? Birmingham got there, yeah. I know Cardiff. Everyone have, played. but too big. Too big, yeah. yeah. And Cardiff. What about the NFL? The NFL. I think Craig went to see the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas I don't know if that's their full names. I know they're known by the Chiefs, yeah, so the Chiefs, I think it's yeah. Kansas City Chiefs. International honestly. team. Obviously, Scotland played there, but that's probably too high. Scotland. Yeah. Um, they played... I think some obscure teams. Yeah. Um, probably any other NFL Any teams. friendlies that they've played there? Yeah. Gov. Yeah. Um, I think maybe come. obviously the big ones, Chelsea, okay. Man United, Southampton, um, played there last year. Um, let's try. I think we'll go with Cardiff. Ten seconds left. We'll go with um, Birmingham. I'm going to go with Cardiff. 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 Okay. I think we've made up our minds, yeah. OK, uh, there we are. We can stop the clock there. Let's have your three answers. What are you going to okay. So the first one will be for the NFL International Series. Yep. Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. OK, next one. And two for the, the top one there, the cup teams. We're going for Birmingham City. Birmingham City. And Cardiff City. Cardiff City. Of those three answers, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Let's go for the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs will put last. Least likely to be pointless? Um, Birmingham. And then we pop Cardiff in the middle. OK, well, let's put the answers up on the board in that order. And here they are. We have got Birmingham City, Cardiff City, 
and Kansas City Chiefs. Well, very best of luck. Three good answers up on the board there. Surely one of those might win that jackpot for you. What would you like to do with it if you won it? David? Well, I think I'd just have a big party, I think, you know. Back I think so. a party. You know, hey, that's the best way to spend the money. That's the way to do it. Um, how many people would you invite? Just a, just a couple? Just four or five. Four or five. Yeah, just... That's the way to <laughs> That'd do it. That'd be enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, how about you? Uh, probably have to spend it on a holiday, I think. Maybe take my girlfriend somewhere nice. Probably have to spend it on a holiday. <laughs> yeah. No pressure, though. Uh, I think, yeah. OK, well, very best of luck. Your first answer was Birmingham City. This is the one you thought was probably least likely to be pointless. In this case, we were looking for any team that's played either in the FA Cup or in the League Cup games at the new Wembley. If Birmingham City is pointless, it will win you £1,000. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Birmingham City. It's right. It just has to be pointless now, and you will leave here with £1,000. Down it goes. Birmingham City takes us into single figures. Still going down, still going down. You have to... Yeah! Very well done, indeed. <laughs> brilliant, very well done. Birmingham City, brilliant. <laughs> Done indeed. Congratulations, David and Ryan. Birmingham City was a pointless answer, which means you go home back to Edinburgh with that jackpot of £1,000. Brilliant. Well played, Jens. Very well. Yeah, uh, Birmingham City won the 2011 League Cup final. Um, would have been much more exciting if you put them in a different order, because <laughs> if we'd gone on, Cardiff City would have scored you one point, oh. and Kansas City Chiefs would also have scored you one point. Oh. Good answer. So answers. well done, Birmingham. Uh, you mentioned Southampton during your 60 seconds, which is also a pointless answer. So uh, you had a couple in reserve. Let's take a look at all the, the pointless answers here. We'll start with those uh, teams that have played at Wembley in the FA Cup and so on. Barnsley, Reading, Southampton, Sunderland, Birmingham City and West Brom were the pointless answers. I'll give you the low scorers. Uh, Patterson, Sheffield uh, United would have scored you three and one point for Stoke, Bolton Wanderers, Millwall, Portsmouth and Watford. Move on now to these NFL teams. Uh, six pointless answers here. The Falcons, the Broncos, the Lions, the Steelers. You also could have had the Minnesota Vikings and the San Diego Chargers. Highest scorer there was the Jacksonville Jaguars. They were the, uh, the biggest scorer. Uh, and international teams against England. Scotland would have scored you 23 points, by the way. Uh, Andorra, Ghana, Israel, Mexico, uh, Belarus, Belgium, Bulgaria, Denmark, Egypt, Hungary, Kazakhstan, Moldova, Peru and Ukraine. Those are the pointless answers. Very well done if you got one at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our winning players, David and Brian, who go away with today's jackpot of £1,000. Very well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>